Oof. Okay, I'm on. Good morning. Good morning, people here. And good morning for those who are listening online. I just want to thank you for watching. Hopefully, there's many will watch. Uh, hopefully, this the signal won't cut this time we're working on it. We have a brand new wire. We keep uh, losing a feed, and uh, it's really discouraging. But we're trying our best. And so I am just, uh, just want to uh, start this message today with prayer because I know that there's a lot of people out there that are, uh, you know, fearful. And so uh, I felt led by the Lord to do this. So just uh, whoever is watching right now online, our heart is going uh, with people at the nursing home. We just prayed for the people in the nursing home in our city. There's a lot of COVID uh, cases, but, Lord, uh, but there's a lot of cases all over Canada and the world right now. And so uh, God is a good God, and we believe that God will get us out of there, uh, of this mess that we're in. So, Father, I just pray. We pray. We pray for the people watching online. People are not watching, too. And we pray, Lord God, that somehow you're going to get rid of this COVID virus. Father, we pray encouragement for the people, Lord, that, that are fearful and uh, some are not working and some are uh, uh, des desperate and some there's all kinds of issues out there. Father, we believe. We believe that you came to set the captives free, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We know, Lord God, all over the world, in Canada, <laughs> especially for us, Lord, that we are praying for a breakthrough revival. We're praying for you to move in a powerful way to get rid of this virus, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we are a good God. And we pray for the people watching. We pray for those that are not watching. We pray that peace will come upon the people in their homes. We pray that you will just touch them by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the people in a nursing home right now, Lord God. We pray that you will empower them. Lord, we pray that you will hug them for us. We pray, Lord God, that uh, they're going to have godly encounters, Lord God. Encouragement. We pray for Ken that's in the nursing home uh, that we love so much. And we just, uh, he's uh, one of our, part of our church. And Lord, we just pray for him. We lay hands on him. We pray peace be still. And we pray and believe for this thing to be done with in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And uh, everybody says, Amen. Amen. We thank you, God. So today, I just want to share a, 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 a part one. I'm sure I'm not going to go far with this message this morning because I want the Holy Spirit to really, really get hold of me. And so I, I'm just asking him to take hold of me because this is a message that every one of us as believers, I'm talking to believers, that we need to remind ourselves a lot. And so when you're a minister, when you're a pastor, your, your job is not just like I prophesy to, I speak things, I... You know, I, I move in different gifts things, but God has called me to pastor. And so pastors, we're called to disciple people. We're called to raise them up. And we're called to remind people, remind uh, the flock, or remind the people that why they're here. So my question for you here this morning is, um, how far do you want to go with God? If you're a Christian, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, how far do you want to go with him? Right? Because it's up to us. Many say, well, you know, I'm a big believer. I believe in Jesus Christ. I give him my life. But yeah, but does he? Does he have your whole life? Does he have everything about you? Do you, do you watch over yourself? You know, today, this morning I want to talk about character. And God has a lot to say about character. Our character. And so uh, this, it's not in my notes, but this sermon uh, came about when I uh, I heard this man of God. Uh, he was uh, he was taking up to heaven. Kevin Zadai is his name, and I love watching him and hearing him because it seems that God is speaking to me or speaking to whoever is listening. From it's like being with Jesus because he, he shows Jesus the way he met him and what Jesus told him, and Jesus told him many many things. And I know for some you know people it's very hard to understand. That some people go to heaven and come back, but yes. It does happen. I don't know how that works. Even even Paul the Apostle was caught up to heaven. So, you know, there's the example. There's many, many people. Enoch was caught up to heaven. He never died himself. He's, you know, he never died. God just took him. So people go to heaven. It's hard to understand. But anyway, I just want to say that the one thing that Jesus emphasized, and it touched my heart so much. It touched my heart because sometimes I look at myself and I say, I I feel God and how what I see, my attitude in my heart. 
And, and so the Lord told uh, Jesus, told Kevin, he says, you know what? It says the, the biggest thing I want to see in my people is to see them carry our good character. Character is very important for God because you know what? We represent Jesus. We represent, literally represent God on earth. God has us. He has his spirit living in us. And we're supposed to be obedient to his spirit. Right? And so God expects us, his people, to act like him. And so sometimes, you know, we tend to think, well, that's going to come on its own. It won't. It won't. It won't because it comes by a great desire in us if we want to. Right? Because I'm going to show you some tools. I'm going to give you some examples uh, in the Word of God that trains us to become like that. And so God, is he, he wants to be pleased. How do you please God? Well, in one great way uh, is when we reveal his love for people out there, that we love people. It's just like I have so many masks here. There. You're seeing him, me or what I would mask, but I'm just, you know, when I walk around there, I, I, I walk, uh, I'm not, I'm about 27 or 25 feet away from people. And so just for whoever's listening, but, but God expects his people to act like him. That's why he's given us his spirit, right? And so uh, my, my question again to you is how far do you want to walk with God? Do you want to, do you want to please him with all your heart? Or you just want to just ride the wave and just as long as you get saved, that's it, that's all. Well, I don't know about you, but I want to please my master. I want to please him. And hopefully you, you too, you want to please him. And you're going to be open to your character and some stuff that the Holy Spirit's been pointing at you for a long time. Right? And, and one way God does that is then when we're, you know, when there's a lot of pressure, I look at it this way. When their pressure is added, then our true character comes out. Do you ever notice that? How impatient you are? Suddenly you realize, wow. I thought I had patience, but now I don't have. As an example, right? Because patience is a virtue. It's one of the, the, the it's it's one of the, the the character traits of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, right? The 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 fruit of the Spirit, I want to say, right? So that I'm just saying an example. So so God expects us to deal with that. It just won't go on itself. We have to work on that. And some say, well, you know, you don't have to work. Well, the Bible says. You have to work on your salvation with fear and trembling. That's what the Bible says. You don't work to get saved. You get saved by faith. But after you're saved, God expects us, us to grow up. And so the, um, I'll share with you many, many things this morning. As believers, we tend to forget that the reason that God saved us is to have a people that will fully carry his character traits. That's his goal for us and we tend to forget you know sometimes in our day-to-day -day living we forget that that's the goal but how does do people out there will believe that God exists and Jesus is real if we don't show him in our love right if he sees that we act like a, a world the, the Bible says a friend of the world is an enemy of God what is that what does it say that means if you act like, like the world if you seek revenge like the world does if you hate people like the world does, if you do all these things, if you're jealous like the world, then you're not. You're becoming God's enemy. That's what the Bible says. I'm not saying this is true. That's what the Bible says. And so God, the Lord, expects His people to have good character traits. The whole New Testament is full of scriptures that tells us that. It really does. And I'm going to show you many, many things. And I'm going to give you tools. Hopefully you will apply these tools. I am actually literally working on my own character. I've asked the Lord to show me, and I've shown, I've seen some stuff in me. I don't like. I'm far from being perfect. All of us, we need to realize that we're far from being perfect. But God, uh, you know, you in order to get that to that place, you really have to see yourself. James talks about that. Seeing yourself as a, in a mirror, I'm going to share that scripture, but, but that's what it is. We need to be honest with ourselves and uh, humble ourselves and see where I'm far from being perfect. And then the neat thing is that God will help. God will help. God sees us. But it starts with having a humble heart. So when a person truly gets saved, he becomes a new creation. We all know that, right? A new creation in Christ Jesus. That's called being born again or, you know, when you receive Jesus as Lord, you know, I'm talking to other uh, people also online. 
That when that's how you become a true believer. You are an honest with God. No, you know you need a savior. You sh you see and you hear what the whole, what God did for you on the cross. Jesus shed His blood on the cross and uh, rose again on the third day. And and then if you believe that message, then you get saved. You receive Him as your Lord, and you want to follow Him. If you're sincere, then God gives you a brand new heart. It's called a new creation. And it says that in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. Speaking of people of God, it says there, I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. See, that's, that's the exchange that God gave. A true believer will have a tender heart, a pliable heart. You guys cold? I just turned the heat up. It's up to 25 there, so you know, I see some. It's cold out there, he so. Um, so anyway, so God, God promised, and that's in the Old Testament, promised that he would give his followers a good heart, a, 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 a heart transplant. I'm not talking about a physical heart. I'm talking about the emotional heart, a pliable heart, a heart like David says, right? David had a, a pliable heart. And so it's inside. If you're a true believer, that means that you have that heart in there. You have that compassion, that fear of God, that love for God, and that love for people. But yet, you know, that's why we need to read the Word, and that's why we need to get encouraged with messages like this, so that God can use that to change us, right? But we, there was a heart transplant in a believer. But that is just the start. After having a heart transplant, we need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and His fire to purge every chaff. What I mean by that is that we need to have an encounter with God. See, that's where it starts. You know, many people wonder, well, why do people, when we lay hands on them, they fall on the ground? Well, it's because they have an encounter with God. They want God to touch them. I had many, 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 many encounters with God. Right? We need to fire God. We need God. Say, God. I need you in my life. I need you. I see myself, and I am not satisfied the way I serve you. You know, it's nice to be saved, but we all need to come to a place and ask God, God, I want more of you. I want you. I'm not treating my, the people that you love so much the way I should. I see myself by the word of God, and I, I just don't love myself. I don't love what I'm doing. See, that's where it starts. It has to start. I'm talking about after being saved, that you're honest with yourself and you say, God, I want, I want to represent you better. I want to touch human souls for you. It's only then will the word see, the world will see. Ain't that what Jesus says in his prayer? And it's, it's in my message too. That they may be one as we are one. Right? Well, God expects his people to be one. He expects his people to be the light. Of the world, Jesus says, right? So it starts by totally being sold out for God. You know, Jesus, you know, we all, and I skip many scriptures. I try to trim down uh, scriptures because I, I'm a man of scriptures. I like to prove my case like in court. And scriptures is what changes you. But we all know the parable of the soul, right? But I want to just finish the, 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 the end of that parable. Jesus was focusing on the character. All, all uh, the seeds is talking about the, on the ground. Well, that's the ground of our heart. There's four types of seeds. And on the fourth type of seed, these, only these seeds, only these seeds will work out and bear fruit, he said. And what you, the seed was planted, it's the word of God. It's the love of God. It's, it's, it's God having his way in a human heart. That's what he's talking about. So Jesus said it this way, right? That's why he was focused on character. Jesus was always focused on character. So Jesus says this, And others fell on good soil and yielded the crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has here, let him hear. Right? He said that right after. So he, what he's saying here, he says, hey, listen, pay attention to what I mean by this message, this parable that I told you. And so Jesus was describing, and many, many and men and women of God will 
we'll take this for fruits for you know whatever faith for something or, or whatever but really in a nutshell God is talking about salvation here if you look at different uh, gospel the three gospel and one, one I can't remember which one I don't know if it's Mark or Luke uh, well maybe it's in Matthew too but at the end he says that so that they will be saved right he's talking about human hearts and how uh, the gospel message will attract and people will get serious with God. Really, that's what Jesus' parable of the seed is, the sower. It means that God, Jesus is interested because he says that according to what he says in that parable, I'm not going to go there, but only 25% of people listening to the gospel get saved. Only 25. Because all the three other ones before that, they all fail. Because of... Uh, things in the world, more interested in other things, whatever. It's, uh, you know, first of all, the enemy steals the message, the first one. So they hear the gospel message, but then they just, they, it doesn't even grasp, it doesn't even go in the heart. So Jesus, what I'm trying to say is that Jesus is talking about human hearts. And then the last one is bear fruits, 160 and 30. That means that you grow in things of God, you grow in God, you grow in character. See, we'll never be perfect. Only in one is perfect is Jesus. But at least he wants us to work on it. right? Because he wouldn't put these things in scriptures. So know what Jesus says here. He says, he who has a hear, let him hear. And I would add what the Spirit is saying. Jesus is saying, listen, you have to pay attention. Whenever Jesus says this, you know, it's in the book of Revelation there, too. It means that we need to pay attention. We need to pay attention. So his focus is for us to yield and operate in nine fruits of the character of the Holy Spirit, mentioned here in Paul's letter, by the, which is crucifying the flesh. So I'm going to read very slowly the fruits of the Spirit. And I'll see what the, what the Holy Spirit does with this, but, but I want to really be slow. I really want us to catch what he's saying. Because the fruits that Jesus was talking about was the character traits of God. Right? As I read this, you will recognize that some of them, you don't, you don't operate in them. Why? Because you, you're not, you haven't cultivated those fruits yet. Okay? So I'm going to be honest with you. I know for one fact, me, God, is way, it was, he's, he's, He wants me to change patience. It won't come on its own. I have to work on it. So here in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. <laughs> Hopefully we all operate in love, right? <laughs> At least a little bit of love. Love for God, love for people. Joy, peace, patience. Now I know God is, is working on that one for me. Kindness. Oh, we, we could really use a little bit of kindness sometimes with people that we get frustrated with, right? Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. When we respond to people, God expects us to respond in a gentle way, right? I don't know, but sometimes I wonder, Lord, uh, you know, because I see myself. You need to see yourself in that. Self-control, that means losing your temper, easy, whatever, right? Restraint. Do you have enough restraint in your character? These are all fruits here. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ, Jesus, now th that's what the Word of God says, have crucified, note the word crucified, the flesh with its passions and desires. So what did he mean by that? Well, inside of us, our spirit man is supposed to rule. Our body, well, before we got saved, our body, our soul used to rule. Me, myself, and I, which is the sin. That's the sin. Uh, selfishness is the sin. Sin nature is I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> I want it my way or um, it's the by way. Well, when you become a believer, that has to go. And your spirit man, your spirit is supposed to overrule your soul. That's the way. But there's a fight inside of us, right? Our eyes are open. We read the word. The word, the, the word also is, is there. <laughs> Unfortunately, many people don't read the word, but 
But the word is made to change us, to wash us. So if you don't read the word, you need a cleansing. <laughs> but especially in the New Testament, because that's the New Covenant, but I'm, you know, the, the New Testament, the Old too, I'm just saying the whole word of God changes you. Proverbs and, and, uh, and Psalms, the Proverbs, there's a lot of stuff that really corrects you. Let me tell you. But, but the word is supposed to, to make you change. So inside of a believer, a true believer, there's a fight. And God wants to win, which is called fruits of the Spirit. And so we all have to get to that place in God. Now, that won't happen on its own. That happens when you yield to the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is given us to help us. He's our helper, comforter, and all that. But also, he's the one who, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't go there. You shouldn't go, uh, do that. You shouldn't look at that. You know, all these things. That was not a good attitude, Louis. You should, re you should re ask forgiveness. You know, all these things. Well, the Holy Spirit inside us, we know. We know when we do wrong. Let me tell you, we know. But the flesh wants to rule. But the flesh has to die. The flesh, I'm talking about our mind, will, and emotions, has to die. And what needs to rule is to please God. That's called the fear of God. That's called living for God. Totally to be surrendered to act like Him. And it won't happen on its own. We always stand, well, that's going to happen on its own. No, it won't. You have to be uh, surrender voluntarily. It demands commitment. We are to kill our old habits. Old habits are so hard to get rid of. Because our body is used to, our mind is used to uh, its own way of thinking. So God expects his people to grow up. Right? Peter, who had denied Jesus three times, was the, he, he was used as the Imagine that he denied Jesus three times, then he was used as the leader of the church the first, when the church first began. And so something happened to Peter. Something literally happened to Peter. Because the Peter that I read, and I'll read, I'll read from 2 Peter there, but that Peter is not the same Peter. Because what he, he gives a formula, he gives like stuff for us to apply, but that Peter was changed. I believe it's because he got empowered by the Holy Spirit, but also, also, you know, remember when Jesus says, feed my sheep, you know, feed my lamb, feed my sheep. What was he saying? He says, listen, you've learned your lesson. He denied Jesus three times. It broke him so much when he saw himself denying Jesus. And then Jesus, of the compassion of his heart, he asked him three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Remember that part? Well, I believe that God was working on his heart like he works on ours. And when we learn our lesson, we learn our lesson. And Peter had learned his lesson. His, 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 he was broken before his Savior. And it changed him. And we need to be broken like that too. And this same Peter wrote this. The same Peter wrote this. In 2 Peter chapter 1. And as I read that, I, we, know, we need to realize he gives us an example of how to encourage the believer, whoever is going to read this letter, how to, to go about become a better person, a better believer. So this starts like this. This letter is from Peter, Simon Peter, a slave. Note here, he calls himself a slave, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to you who share the same precious fate we have. So he's speaking to believers, right? This fate was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. Then he starts in verse 2. May God give you more and more grace. That's the power of God or the ability of God inside of you to become a better person. That's what he's talking about, okay? Grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. So inside of us, it's already in there. We have received all of this by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. 
So there's two things he's talking here, and we're going to continue. But the first step is, is to know God. See, being a believer is really to come to know God. How do we know God? By His Spirit, by praying. We feel His tender heart. That's what moves, moves me. I know many here, you, you know God. How, do you, how can you prove you know God? You know, you feel His emotion. You, you have an in, awesome uh, heart for Him, to please Him. It's spirit to spirit. You can't even understand what's that. But, but it comes, our walk with God should, you know, because there's, there's two types of believers in the church. You know what? I, there's tares and there's wheat. Jesus said that. So there's two types of believers in the church. Some that are not even believers. Hopefully everyone here, you're a real believer. But in a nutshell, that's what Jesus says. And a true believer, the one, the wheat, are totally surrendered by the, to God, the Holy Spirit. Totally surrendered to really please God. They watch over the action. They, they're not perfect, but their motive our motivation is always to say and do the right thing all the time. They fail at times, but, but when they fail, they repent right away. Very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Some that don't, they will grieve. That's called grieving the Holy Spirit, hurting Him. Because when a person, a believer, says or does something that the Holy Spirit says not to do and you do it, then that's grieving Him. You broke His heart. But God expects His people to grow. So the first way to, to apply what Peter is saying is that you have to know God. There are people who wonder, well, unbelievers don't know about that outburst, but uh, no, believers should. Should, because it comes by the Spirit of God. You know that you know that you know. I get revelation knowledge by God Himself. When I pray in tongues, whatever, I get, I, I get to feel Him. I get, I get I get messages by him. It's downloads from heaven. It's not it's not I don't it doesn't it I don't work hard for messages. It comes by the spirit of God. The nation knows this. That knows this. We we get messages because the, we know God. God you see the sincerity in our it says it's like he's saying, "Well, I want you to preach this this week." What you're getting here is out of the heart of God. Really literally. I'm preaching this this is where he expect it's people to be today. And this, this is the message. This is what he wants, the manna from heaven. You're getting manna from heaven. God wants us to work on our character. Why? To represent him for the people, I believe, that are going to get radically saved. And we need to become what he wants us to become. To prepare us for our mission. We have a mission. I'm telling you. We're going to see the greatest move of God ever. You're, you're going to see, wow, Louis, you're right, you were right. We're being prepared right now. Really, God is preparing. He wants to show the sh a showpiece of His people. And He wants us to grow in Him. And then it's to tap into His power. Because it says there that we have power to overcome. See, uh, we inside of us, real believers, we have power over the enemy. The power of God. See, we would not be able to follow the Ten Commandments because it was impossible to follow the Ten Commandments. Everybody failed. God had to give us His Spirit. He had to take our place on the cross, and then He gives us His Spirit. And then we can follow the commandments of God. Then we can love God. Then we can love uh, other, our neighbors we love ourselves. It's only Him doing it. But we have to yield our spirit man to Him. That's why Jesus says, yeah, I could name you multitudes of scriptures. Abide in me and I will abide in you. Without me you can't do nothing. What does that mean? That means you can't do it on your own. You need the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. Even this word here, the Bible is very clear. The people that don't have the Spirit of God, this is just a book. This is just a book. But when you get born again, when your eyes are open, then the truth. I will always remember. Uh, one day I'll bring the Bible. Because when I first got saved, Helen had a Bible at home, and it's all yellow. Because they all, you know, I, I, I would, I'll I, show you. It's all yellow. Everything is yellow. I tried to read it before I got saved, and it did not make sense. But then when I got the Spirit of God, when I got saved, then, woo! It came alive so much that I had a yellow pencil there, and 
oh, this is good, this is good, this is good. So I had to buy another Bible because I damaged her Bible. So, but so, but that's that's the way it is. Is the Holy Spirit. So we have to we have to know that there's power inside. We can do this. So what Peter is saying here, we can do it. So I, I continue, verse four. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature. What nature? His divine nature. That means the nature of God. What, what the Bible is saying here, you can actually share his nature. That's the goal. That's the goal of Jesus. God the Father's goal is for us to become more and more. We won't become Jesus, but we can become more and more better to, to share his divine nature nature his divine nature is full of love and compassion and everything that god is right and power like he's given us power to overcome but but it's the it is divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desire see that's the goal the goal is that we show the world that there's a difference between a believer and a non-believer because the whole world is under corruption it's under satan's rule uh, people don't know that but we know that we know that's why Jesus had to uh, spend 40 days in the desert and Satan tempted him. It's because Satan, this world right now belongs to Satan until he's taken down by God himself. Right? But for now, he's the ruler. He's the prince of the air. He's the one that causing all kinds of avoc and, and avoc and, and people blame God. But it's not God. But Satan has actually sat, he has saturated the gospel message uh, in the Bible so much that uh, people think that the devil is not real. He has succeeded, literally succeeded in making people think the devil is just a lie. It's not true. And all along, they're being deceived by him himself. Ain't that something, right? But anyway, that's another story. So then in verse 5, it says, In view of all this, now know what it says here. Make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement with your faith. That's what faith is that? That's your faith. That you, you receive Jesus as your Lord. You live for him. So here Peter is saying, supplement your faith with a generous pro provision of moral excellence and moral excellent knowledge. That would be Bible study. And knowledge with self-control, applying the Bible study. And self-control with patience. Then you, you need to be patient. And patient endurance. With godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop, note what it says here, to develop, you need to develop. In this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Or other version, the King James says, fail. You will never fail. That means you can actually come to a place and never fail God. Never fail in, 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 in being with the right mindset and character. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So God, according to what Peter says, Peter had, I just mentioned, he had an encounter with God. Something changed him. And the same should happen to us. We need to have our heart broken and see ourselves as we are and be serious with God. Right? Let's be honest. In the body of Christ, many, and I'm not talking about yeah, specifically people here, but I've seen many people, many people that have been saved for a long time, they've never changed. Never changed. It breaks my heart. You, you preach to them, you, you know, you share this stuff, and are you, you, I, I just don't I point the finger, but I'm just saying there's some, I, I don't see fruits as much as we should. I, I don't see a broken heart. I don't hear nothing. You know, I, I've many, many men and women of God I know, you guys included, I, I hear it. I hear it. You know, you need to hear, well, you know, I, I want God more. I want Him more. I want change. I, you know, we, we need to come to that place of brokenness. 
and admit when we're wrong, we're wrong, and say, God, please help me. Right? But some never change. I don't see I say that judgingly. I'm just saying because the Bible says Jesus said you shall know them by their fruits. So if we don't see good fruits, get away, fly. There's a fly awoken a fly. Bells of bids around there. Kill it. So in reading all this, we see that Peter is telling us that we must be totally dedicated to work on our personal character daily. Now I mean daily. This is not just a one-time deal. This is daily. And the Lord will always test. Um, I, I can't even remember. Uh, but one man of God years ago, I remember this, this phrase. First comes the word, then comes the test or the trial. Right? So, you know, you get we get happy. We read the word. Oh, this is just so comfortable and all that. And then God sees it. You know, it talks about patience, whatever. And then God, you know, in the same maybe half an hour later, maybe an hour, I'm just saying, suddenly you're caught up on the highway or whatever, and so there's a test a patient comes your way. Maybe it's the, the, food, the food market, you know, uh, independent or whatever, and suddenly his, his steam is almost coming out of your, 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 your head. Is inside of you, you're, you're impatient, and you see that, and inside you're saying to yourself, well, oh, come on, you know. And so then, then you have a choice. Then you have a choice. I'm just giving an example. You know, some, I, have to, you, I have to do this. I have to learn. We have to learn to calm ourselves and say, no, no. This is ungodly. This is, right now is just thoughts. I don't like these thoughts, Lord. Please help me. I'm just, I'm just sharing true facts. And so then you, you just say, no, I want, no, I'm not going to fail this test. I am not failing this test. I'm going to be full. So you ask God inside. It, it should come naturally. And then suddenly, suddenly you just calm down. You represent God here. We have to come to a place where I represent God here. I'm not going to act like these people. Because when you're around people that act like that, it try, tries to get all of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a transfer of spirit. I'm not talking about human spirits. That's another thing I've heard, learned years ago by Henry Hinn, the brother of Benny Hinn. And Benny Hinn has a teaching on transfer of spirit. Now, I'm not talking about demonic spirit. I'm talking about when, you know, suddenly, you know, everything's gone kadori, and suddenly somebody came, comes close by and sits with you, whatever, and suddenly you start acting like that person. Well, that person, there's a transfer of spirit, so you have to protect yourself and not allow to act like that. I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you have... To realize that you represent God. Now this cannot become religious. It has to become like of a love for God. A love for God. That you represent God. That's how you love God. You resist the devil and he will flee. You push it back. You allow goodness. You allow the fruits to come, whatever it is. And suddenly you will be amazed. And I say all this just to say that's what God is working on his people right now. He's working on that. So the steps that Peter gives does not have to be in order, but there needs to be a commitment. All these steps that I read in Second Peter, they're not in order. You don't have to look at it. But they're, they're, it shows that Peter is trying to say you have to have a commitment. You have to read the word. You have to have a commitment to do it, to grow in God. Are you, do you have a commitment this morning? Will you commit more? Right? So Jesus is giving us power, which is this grace to be able to display his divine nature, which is actually the fruits of the Spirit, the character of God. The nine fruits of the Spirit of God are the character of God. And if we do that, we will never fail. And we will be so, uh, uh, we will touch God's heart so much. So much. We don't do it for the reward. We do it because we love God and we want to touch his heart. I don't know about you, but I want to represent him more and more and more. That when people look at me, they look at they see God. They see the character of God, the love of God. The I'm far from being perfect. I'm not there yet. You're not there yet. But one thing God wants us to work on it. Right? Will you work on it? Promise? <laughs> so
So we get to operate in it by getting to know him, verse 3, and also by reading his word, which is the knowledge point spoken out of in verse 6. But all this only is, is only accomplished if we have come to a place of brokenness before him, totally yielded to him and his ways. And that, again, I can't emphasize it more, is that to see yourself as we are. Only when we see ourselves as we are, can we really say, no, I'm going to change. And the Holy Spirit's job is to point things to us that needs a fixing. Paul had learned this lesson well, and he was totally committed for Jesus to have his way with him. In the calling he had, and also the way he lived his life. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Paul, the uh, awesome author of all these great epistles, these letters that he, he, uh, he wrote, he came to this conclusion in his walk with God. I discipline my body like an athlete, training, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Even Paul himself, he had to kill his bad behaviors. He had to learn to yield to the Holy Spirit. He had to learn to die to self. He had to learn to die to, to this world. He had to learn to yield to God. Didn't understand why he had to go through certain things. But God's always testing us. Remember, God's always testing us, allowing testing. He's allowing us to grow in Him. He wants to see growth in us. How, how long have I been going there, Dan? Okay, so I'm just going to finish with this this morning. On a temple mount, and we're not going to go there, but on a temple mount, Jesus laid out the contract or the foundation of his kingdom. And if you, I'm not going to go there, I'm not, because it would be too long, but I'm just going to give you some highlights. You know, his, his famous sermon on the Beatitudes, right? You know, you guys know all that. But what Jesus was literally saying, he was describing, describing what he was, what he was going to have as a people. He was describing what he, his intention was for the kingdom uh, people in his kingdom, this, the civi citizens of his kingdom, what kind of a character would they carry? How would they carry themselves on the earth? What would please him? And so in, in uh, uh, the first thing it says, you know, blessed are the, well, those who are poor in spirit. Poor in spirit and understanding of their needs for God. That's what, what God, the first thing Jesus points the finger when you look at these Beatitudes is, the first thing that he expects of people that will please him is that they will see that they need God. And without well, God, they can't do it on their own. They will hunger for him. They will want him. The second thing is they mourn. They will mourn. What does that mean? That means that they will mourn. They will cry out for the a society is corrupted. They will call out on God. They will intercede. They will mourn uh, when they make mistakes in their life. Right away, they will uh, they all uh, they will be able to they will repent right away. They will see themselves as they are, and they will ask forgiveness. The third thing that God Jesus expects his people they are humble instead of thinking they are better than others. They will humble themselves. They won't think they're better than any other person. That's what God expects his people to be. Number four, they hunger and thirst for justice, to do the right thing, and to pray for the right thing. We are people of justice. Why are we so so frustrated right now and things that are happening in the world? It's because there's a lot of injustice. And when you carry the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of God is the Spirit of justice, Jesus is justice, He will bring justice, then it gets you go going, right? And so His people will be a people of justice. And so they will treat it like that. They will want to do what's right. The fifth thing, they have learned to be merciful. Those people learn that nobody is perfect. 
And even so, as those that need to be, they, they would think by now they should be perfect, they are merciful. You overlook a matter. You pray for those that are doing things that they shouldn't or say things that they shouldn't. You pray for them. You're merciful to them. That's what God expects. Number six, their hearts are pure by allowing God to expose the internal imperfection so it be acknowledged and dealt with. And so a person like that, Jesus is saying, they will be pure in hearts, meaning they will want to be more pure. They will stay away from sin. They will watch what they say. They will watch what they go. They will watch over themselves. They will have pure hearts to do everything in purity. Amen? Number seven, they will try to bring peace as much as they can. When they see all kinds of stuff happening, they will always try to get into the conversation a conversation or whatever to bring peace, to try, try to reconciliate people and mend their differences. That's the type of people that God expects. And then finally, number eight, they won't mind being persecuted for doing the right thing. They will take up the mockery. They will be solid in their faith. They will do, the, they, they will do their best to please God. And even if they're mock and laugh at because of what they stand for, they will learn to take it. And so Jesus finishes by saying these people will be fully rewarded for doing all the above, which consists of dying to self and yielding to God's ways only. Only to God's ways. Totally surrendered. Totally on fire for God. Motivated to only do that. And that's what God expects of his church. Jesus expects of it. Shining their light. You know, many scriptures I could share with you. Shining your light. What is shining your light? Is Acting like the Lord. Bring light. I had no sir with Kevin Zadai. You know, the Lord told showed Kevin Zadai that 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 right now we're being trained. The the character God is gonna deal with our character because we're being trained for the mission ahead of us. God expects us to grow. So God needs a people that will operate in pure love and compassion for God and for the people around us. Even more for their enemies. Even for enemies. It's hard to love an enemy. But let me tell you that God expects that. In John 17, 21, Jesus speaking, I pray that they will be all one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. See, our goal, our mission here on the earth is to represent God so much that people will take notice and say, they have been sent. They have met Jesus. We show Jesus is real by what we say and by what we do. Paul gives us a glimpse of how love is manifested in everyday life. And I'm, sh I'm finishing with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous. It does not brag. It is not proud. Love is not rude. It is not selfish. It cannot be made angry easily. Love does not remember wrong done against it. Love is never happy when others do wrong, but is always happy with the truth. Love never gives up upon people. It never stops trusting, never loses hope, and never quits. It never quits. Meaning, finding it too hard. Love never loses hope in people. You don't have abandoned people. Even if they said bad things, whatever, you never, never abandoned people. You always believe the best. This is the character traits that God expects of us. So we all need to see ourselves as we truly are. If we are sincere, we will ask God to expose anything that offends Him in our lives and character. And I pray that for now. I pray that. I'll, I'll be ending with this. Holy Spirit will use the words of God, a taught, or even expose it by allowing circumstances to happen and how we reacted. So I expect God to test you, to test me, to test us, to allow things to pop to the surface so that we can actually see it. If you truly love God, then you will want 
this with all your heart. So, do you want this? I'm just talking to you. Do you really want it? Do you want to be broken? Do you want to be more in love with God? Do you, do you want to be used by God? Do you want to represent God? That, that's what I should literally say. So, I just pray. I'm just going to end with prayer. Heavenly Father, I don't know who's watching. I know there's uh, some people here. Lord, for those who have their hearts broken right now, and they really want to follow you. And they're sincere with their walk with you. And this message has really touched them. I pray, Lord God, even myself, I want to go further. I want to be more in love with you. I want to be used by you. I want to be changed from glory to glory. And I pray for the people watching, the people that will watch in the future on YouTube channel. I just pray, Lord God, that you're going to help us do that. It only comes by the Holy Spirit. I just pray for the people here and the people there. I pray, Lord God, that they will get serious with God. And I pray that you will expose everything that needs to be changed. All of us have something, a character trait that we need to change. All habits that need to die. And I just pray for that. In Jesus' name. And I end with this. If I'm talking to anybody that you're not a believer, you uh, and being a believer is not going to church or being a member of a uh, church. Being a believer, a Christian, is to really receive Jesus as your Lord. And if you haven't done that, I challenge you to do that. Get serious with God. And say, from this day forward, I want to live for you. And if you're serious and you ask God, God's going to give you his spirit. And what I preached on today, you will experience. Hopefully you catch on to that. Hopefully I'll finish this message or maybe. But next week I'll, I'll continue this message. And hopefully uh, you'll be able to watch. Thank you for watching. Thank you people here. And uh, God bless and have an awesome day and week. Amen.